In this section we're going to look at previewing and printing documents and we're going to be working with the info sheet A file in the chapter 6 folder of the practice files. Now here we can see the, uh, the document we have and we can scroll up and down and we can see there's a second page here and we've got a couple of text boxes and some colors but what are these actually going to look like when they're printed and how can we um, sort out the uh, the page itself. Let's start with the page layout and there's a page layout tab on the ribbon. Now there are several controls here that uh, we're going to be looking at. We've got margins, orientation, size and columns. Let's have a look at margins first. Now there are different uh, default margin sets that you can have. Here we've got some custom margins, we've got uh, normal, narrow and if you click on these you can see the effect that changing the margins have uh, has on your uh, on your document and you can use the undo button to return things the way they were to begin with. There's an orientation uh, button as well where you can uh, switch the document between portrait and landscape mode uh, should you should you want to but bear in mind this can uh, make huge differences to uh, to the document. You can change the size of the document as well. Now this is important because if you're printing it out you need to make sure that uh, the document size you've set it to will actually match the paper that you're using. This is set to letter. Now here in the UK I'll want to set it to A4 size. Now this is uh, slightly uh, uh, narrower and longer than the uh, letter page so if I click on that it's going to have an effect and you can already see here that we've ended up with a large left margin and a small right margin so we're going to have to uh, going to have to adjust these so we'll need to adjust the margins uh, automatically here in order to get things to fit properly on the page again then uh, uh, we want to be able to see how uh, the actual document is going to look. Now we could, uh, in the view tab on the ribbon, have a look at the one page and two page views, which will give us some kind of an idea. But there's also another view, the print preview view. If you go to the file tab and click on print, then we'll automatically get a preview of what our document will look like when it's printed out. Here we can see. Now, you'll notice straight away that this is different from the uh, previous previous view. If I go back to uh, the view tab here, we have a red background, and if I go back to the print preview view, we have a white background. Well, this is because the print settings are not set up to print the background color of your document and we'll look at the actual printing of documents in a uh, uh, in a couple of segments time so here is where you get a much better idea of what your document is actually going to uh, to look like and you can zoom out here and you can see more than one page uh, if you want to so let's zoom into the first page here uh, there are um, settings in there and as I say we'll have a look at those in a minute but this will give you a much clearer view of what uh, your document will actually look like when it's printed out. Do bear in mind by the way that if you want to print out uh, documents that have a coloured background uh, there are several things, several things to bear in mind here. Firstly unless your printer will print right to the very edge of the page uh, you will end up with a white border around the outside uh, secondly, you need to make sure that the contrast between the text color and the background color is uh, strong enough that people will easily be able to read it. And uh, and the other thing to uh, to bear in mind is that whether you're using a color laser printer or an inkjet printer, it will use a lot of ink. Anyway, in the next segment, we're going to look at how we control what appears on each page. Now that we've had a look at how we can preview and adjust page layout, let's have a look at how we can control what appears on each page. 
and in this uh, section we're going to be using the info sheet B practice file in the chapter 6 folder. Now let's zoom out on this document a little bit so we can uh, control it a little bit more and we'll have a look down and let's say for instance that this last paragraph here we want actually to appear at the beginning of the next page and not on this one well here we can insert a page break and a page break will uh, make all the content under that uh, appear on the following page and you can do this under the insert tab in the pages section by clicking the page break button when you click that then you'll see that that text has automatically been moved down to the following page. You can do a page break anywhere, let's say for instance you only want a couple of paragraphs on this page, you can insert another page break there and that text is now on that page and we only have two paragraphs on this one. We'll undo that. I also want to have a look at the page layout tab on the ribbon and the breaks button here because we've got page breaks here and a column break as well if you want to uh, end a uh, one column before the bottom of the page then you can add a column break here and there are tax wrapping options but I also want to have a look at section breaks now section breaks are uh, breaks in a document if you have changed um, say formatting including the margins or the orientation of the page or a, a different part of the document has different page settings you can add a section break um, between these parts of the document so that you can have these different layouts you can start a section on the next page you can have it continuously on the same page after the, your existing text you can start it on the next even numbered page or on the next odd numbered page So these are useful options especially if you have let's say for instance uh, uh, lots of portrait pages portrait layout pages and you want a landscape page in the middle of the document you can insert a next page section break and you can change that to landscape then have a next page section break after that and change it back to portrait I also want to have a look here in the paragraph section under the page layout tab at the little arrow in the bottom right hand corner you'll remember these bring up dialog boxes with uh, more information here uh, we can look at the line and page breaks controls now here we've got widow and orphan control now widow and orphan control tries to keep uh, if it's turned on tries to keep paragraphs together at the bottom of a page and not split them up um, a widow and an orphan is one line either the t the first line or the last line of a paragraph that appears on its on its own at the very bottom or the very top of a page and it's turned on by default to try and prevent these little lines from uh, appearing uh, appearing on their own keep with next it this controls where the word will uh, break a page between uh, the paragraph containing the cursor and the following paragraph uh, keep lines together um, the option controls where the word will break a page inside a paragraph and page break before controls where the word will break a page before the paragraph containing your uh, cursor there are various other options here as well and you can see previews here uh, down the bottom of how things will work so this is how we can uh, control uh, what appears on a page and in the next section we're actually going to look at printing documents right now let's have a look at printing the documents now that we've uh, seen how to control what appears on the page and how to adjust the layout and for this exercise in the practice files chapter 6 folder we're going to be using the info sheet C file now the print options are under the file menu here on the blue tab at the left of the ribbon and you want to select print now there are uh, a great many options here and you may not see a printer installed Right, you'll see uh, a list of printers, fax, Microsoft XP, XPS document printer, but you might not see your actual printer or it may not be set as the default. The default printer is the one with the little um, green tick next to it. But you can select any printer there or you can select add a printer if uh, your printer doesn't appear. 
Then we come down to the uh, settings. We uh, There are several settings here, print all the pages, uh, print a custom page range. Uh, an easy way to do this is to type uh, pages 1 to 3. Uh, you can do there, 1-3, and you can separate pages as well. You can see here with a comma, so here we're printing pages 1 to 3 inclusive and 5 to 11 inclusive, but we're missing out page 4. And uh, it's a useful way of being able to uh, select what it is you want to print. You can do single sided printing, or if you have duplex, uh, duplexing support on your printer, you can print on both sides, uh, both sides, and depending on your printer will determine whether you print, uh, you flip pages along the long edge or the short edge, and you may need to experiment with a practice copy, and uh, then perhaps stick a, a label on the printer to uh, let people know uh, which, uh, uh, which option it is in the future. You can uh, collate um, pages. If you're printing more than one um, copy of a document, then you can collate the documents. Here up at the very top you'll see there's a, a, a little uh, dialogue for saying how many copies of this document you want. We'll say here four. You can change the uh, orientation of the page, and this should probably match the, uh, uh, the layout that you've got for your actual document. You can choose the page size again. You should be careful this should uh, match your document, but you can change it if the paper type is different. Let's say you're printing um, to a larger uh, piece of paper. You can redo your custom margins here, and you can also uh, specify how many pages you want printed out on a sheet. If it's a draft document, for instance, this can be a very good way of saving paper and uh, can make printing much faster, but do bear in mind the text uh, will be uh, increasingly difficult to read the more pages you include on a sheet. Last but not least, there's an extremely useful little link hidden right down the bottom here called Page Setup, so click on that and we'll have a look at it. Now here we've got the advanced controls that we've looked at previously in uh, other sections about controlling the margins, controlling the uh, paper size and paper type and uh, and controlling the uh, layout of a page. But what I want to look at here under the paper, uh, paper tab is this print options button down in the bottom right. See that? Highlighted in blue. Click on that. Now here is where we um, have additional print options and I'll show you another way to get into these in, in, in a minute. Printing options are here and this is that little magic tick box about printing background colors and images. You remember I said in a previous section that by default Word won't print background colors. And uh, you can print any text that's hidden. There's, there's other options here as well. So let's put a tick in print background colors and images and press OK. Then we'll press OK again and we can now see that the background color has appeared but because the printer that I have installed here doesn't support fully edge-to-edge -edge printing on the left and right, although it does on the top and bottom. You'll see it's going to print with a little white line down on the left and right side. So, uh, the also in the under the the file tab here, you've got options down the bottom, and if you click on options here, go to the uh, display. Um, section then here is another way to get to those printing options there are plenty of options available there when you're finally ready hit the print button and uh, uh, your uh, your job will be sent to your printer of choice in the next segment we're going to look at how we prepare documents for electronic distribution Now that we've looked at printing documents, let's how, have a look at how we distribute them electronically in Word 2010. And again, uh, we're going to be using the practice file InfoSheet C in the Chapter 6 folder. Now, when you've got this document open, the options you want are under the File tab on the ribbon, again, which takes us to the Backstage view. Now, by default, it should take us to the Info uh, pane. You'll see here Info is highlighted on the left. Um, if we have a document open. Now here we have in the panel on the right hand side we have information about the document here. Uh, we can change the title of it. 
we can change any tags or keywords associated with it we can add comments to it and we can change information such as the authors if I change that then you can see that's added there there's also a permissions button here now you can use this to uh, restrict the editing, add a digital signature, um, encrypt uh, with a password any document. Um, there's also a mark as final to let people uh, know that it is a final uh, document and it will be read only and they won't be able to modify it. Then we have a check for issues button. Here we have got three options here. We can uh, check the document for uh, hidden um, data and personal information. We can make sure that the document is accessible for uh, people who need to use screen readers um, or uh, people with other people with disabilities. And we can check compatibility with earlier versions of Word because you may be using uh, features of Word in a document that uh, weren't in previous versions of Word that you would be uh, that people will be using that you could be sending this document to. Now we want to click, when we're happy with those, on the Save and Send link here, just under the Print link. Now there are various options here. We can send it by email, and for each of these options uh, there are various other options here in the right hand side. We can send it directly as an attachment, we can convert it to an Adobe PDF file or a Microsoft XPS um, file, um, or we can uh, send us uh, an internet fax um, if the uh, um, if there is a fax machine at the other end and you know the number we can save it to the web if you have a uh, if you have a Windows Live ID and you use your signed up with uh, the Microsoft um, Office Live service then you can save it here and you can also especially if you're using Windows 7 uh, you will remember you've got jump lists here uh, where you've got recent documents uh, any document that you open from office.live.com will appear in your uh, in your jump list and you can pin it there and uh, you can save documents on the internet and work on them and edit edit them as though they're stored on your local computer and it's an extremely useful way of being able not only to keep documents secure because they're on in the cloud behind a password but also access these documents from wherever you want and I personally use this for a great many of my documents and uh, and it's well worth uh, exploring if you use Microsoft SharePoint perhaps in an office you can save to SharePoint or you can publish it directly to your blog if you have a blog uh, from Word itself the last two options here we can change the file type now here um, we're uh, an Office 2007 Office 2010 document uh, we can change it uh, as a legacy uh, Word 97 uh, 2003 document or we can save it as various other document types here including which rich text format which will open on any word processor and there's a, a direct option down the bottom here for creating uh, portable document formats, Adobe's PDF and Microsoft's XPS. So these are the options for uh, sending, uh, uh, creating digital documents and preparing documents for digital distribution and there's a great many of them here. Again, I can't recommend this save to web um, highly enough. I strongly recommend you have a, uh, you have a look at it um, because it's extremely useful, especially if you use Windows 7. Now in, that's all for this section. In the next section we're going to have a look at how we insert and modify diagrams uh, in our documents.